So the validation utility now, it, it is a combination of maps and a Java exit. And we do support the all the telecom version D0 request messages. Um, and you can run it through either as a single message or as in a batch. And so it will check for missing mandatory or required segments and fields. Um, if there are not used segments or fields that are present, it will report those. Um, we do have Medicaid subrogation options configurable. Code values errors are validated. And with the code value errors, you can indicate a start date to specify which version of the external code lists to use. The other errors that can be reported, you know, we're checking for count fields not equal to number of repetitions within a segment, um, cases where the qualifier fields need to proceed the qualified field, and situation field values based on other values in the segment. Um, so we produce two main outputs based on the validation, uh, XML formatted version and the rejected, rejected response. And in the case of we find no syntax error, we just use the status of captured. And this is just an example of the uh, batch level response that would be generated. Installation. First of all, there have been enhancements and bug fixes since the validation utility first went out. So we we do strongly recommend that you start with 10.2 and then apply the current patch. The rest of these, I think, are just kind of details about the configuration. And I think this would be better to show actually within the files. If we open up the main source map, NCP validation. Um, you can see we have several run maps, like the HIPAA compliance check. We do, in some cases, rely on first doing a pass-through validation against the type tree um, so that some of the additional validation done for reporting exactly what's wrong within the maps or the Java exit is not done if this is successful. However, we have pulled out the code value list checking to always be run um, so that the advantage that gives you is that for the type tree that's used, it's always just the base telecom type tree, and it's not one of the trees we ship that is for a specific code list date. And so we maintain that base tree if there's ever any bugs reported as far as the uh, component rules or, or those situational rules that get validated through the tree, um, that will be current with whatever is correct. Um, it's just, so those will be picked up in the pass through, but the, restriction lists that are in the tree are not really checked. Instead, we use the res this overall restriction list that is dated in a sense so that it has, at the top, it's showing which versions are supported and then If there's any that were added on a specific date, um, that is included. So that's how we maintain within one file different code values that could be added or removed, possibly. Um, we did only start with um, code lists as of 2015. So the other thing about components, 
we do have a very small parameter file. And this has, in the base product comes out with 2016, but if you wanted to put a more recent code list date for what you wanted to pick up these start date values from, it would be updated here. This is the flag that will enable checking for elements and fields that are only valid or have different cardinality requirements as far as whether they're mandatory or situational um, based on Medicaid subrogation. And so basically, you'd want to open up this and see PDP validation and build all the maps. And then you have two choices of how you're running. These are the two main executable maps that you'd want to run. So this is if you're running a batch at a time and it does out of the box, it's pointing to one of the sample files that we ship as data files. And then it re produces this and it's XML. I like to actually open it up in the browser. And the sample data is actually from the original kind of like base dog zero code values. And this is a case where these were removed before 2016. So when we run validation, they give a nice example of the type of error that you get. And then you'd also get the same. And again, this is kind of hard to see that way, but um, you get the error codes that are reported in the batch response. And similarly, if you were running just a single message, you could run this file. It uses the same parameter files input. So the only difference is your file input is expected to be just a single message, not a batch. And then you get the output is named slightly different. And see, it looks much nicer in the web browser, but this does show the um, the same type of format for the, you know, again, this is a custom error report that we generated, um, not specified in the NCBDP standard itself. The one other thing I wanted, it is in the PowerPoint, when you run this, before the first time, this jar file needs to be in your Java class path. Um, so if you're running in Design Studio, the easiest way to do that is to copy it to the, the install directory of, of TX itself. But it could really go, you know, as long as you define, if you're running outside of Design Studio, you know, you, you'd want to put it wherever appropriate based on you know what else you're running that's really it it's fairly simple to run there are some outputs that are kind of intermediate outputs used for the additional processing that normally get not created or do to just have sync set up um, occasionally for for debug you might want to enable those but um, Generally, that would be something that support would use if you had a problem and, and opened it up.